So I think that sometimes people subconsciously will push down their dreams and their goals and their desires to meet their spouse where they are because they are afraid to rock the boat, so to speak. everybody and welcome welcome to another episode of marriage matters i am glenn coleman and i'm joined by my beautiful wife tanya coleman hello and like i said earlier this is marriage matters this is a podcast where we talk about all things relationships um you know primarily marriage but we like to think that these tips and tricks that we give you or just the discussions that we every every week is not a tip or a trick right but just this just these discussions uh, hey let me get it out of there um can help you in, in every area in every area of your life so with that being said how has your week gone my week has been good actually it's been really good it's been um productive okay so um, that's been really great. I've had a productive day today. Um, cool, cool. Checking off some boxes. And, that's always a good thing, man. I love you know? to get the boxes checked. Mm -hmm. There's nothing like, you know, I was talking with someone the other day and I was uh, just getting some things done, organizing some things. And I, and I was telling them, I was like, you know, this organizing things and putting things in place and just accomplish, it's just so soothing to me. Mm -hmm. It's like my zen. It's my it's my happy place. It's your happy place. How so, are you? How was your I'm, week? I'm good. It was it was busy. I did a lot of physical stuff um, this week, and I'm not, you know my body's not used to some of the stuff that I've been doing, you know, bending in some of the positions and being down on the ground, and so I'm a little little sore. A little sore. I was laughing, you know, last night. You know, we both were kind of. Uh, um, because Tanya's been working and by the way you look fabulous I want to tell you that I'm Thank so you. very proud of you I see it uh, and you know you was already you. you was already sexy girl so you know what I'm saying you <laughs> getting all toned you up you make stuff. me blush I'm like hey you know what I'm saying I'm going to take you on a trip or something let's do it <laughs> the week of uh, you know what week I got you <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, so anyway, uh, so yeah, I'm just a little sore, a little sore. But other than that, it's been great. Um, and same thing, getting things done, been, 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 been busy. But, you know, I'm trying to make sure that I'm balancing and, mm -hmm. and keeping things in perspective and putting the first things first. Yes. The so priority the, things. The first things first. The priority things, making them priority. Mm -hmm. And the things that really don't matter. Um, it's like, kind of like the Jahari window. You know, I'm trying to stay mm -hmm. in that that productive, mm -hmm. important uh, quadrant. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I get it. So today, uh, what are we talking about? We are talking about sharing your dreams sharing and your dreams. desires with one another. All right. Sharing your dreams and desires. Mm -hmm. Uh, very important, mm -hmm. you know, um, and, and again, you know, we talk about these subjects, but, and, and, I, I, I want to, you know, I, I would I would wonder, I tell you what, if you could do me a favor, um, when, while you're watching this or listening to this, you know, get at us, you know, you can, you can go on to uh, Facebook mm -hmm. or Instagram, or even if you're listening to this on, um, on Apple podcasts or anchor or whatever, you can send us a message. Um, but I, I'm curious how many of you actually know what it is, what, what's your partner's dreams and or desires? Mm -hmm. You know, because you would be amazed at how many people, they, we, they really don't get into that. Right. Um, you know, especially, you know, you know, I, I was, I was talking with a, other, with a friend of mine, actually I was, um, I was, getting some coaching from a, a friend of mine. Mm -hmm. um, and we we're just talking about some things and I was just telling him, I said, you know, I, I, I mean, I thank God for how I grew up. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I mean, we, we were a pretty middle class family, you know, maybe even a little upper middle class. Um, but y'all bougie. 
I wouldn't say we were bougie. We were definitely not bougie. <laughs> Trust kidding. me. I'm you know, kidding. Glenn Coleman and Lena Manning. I know you're, I know well, you're There fierce. was no bougie. <laughs> there was no bougie. But I mean, we we got, you know, we had everything we needed. And, you know, we, we right. got, we you're had well some, we had some, some perks, if you will. Mm -hmm. Anyway, but my point is, I said, you know, we, I wasn't really, you know, my dad worked the same job for 30 something years, yeah. you know, so it was kind of like, you you go and do and you provide and but as far as like dreaming and shooting for the stars and you got what I'm saying I mean I I really didn't grow up in in that kind of environment I mean my parents they encouraged me to pursue my you know to to pursue things but as far as I, I didn't grow up just dreaming does, mm -hmm. does that make sense mm -hmm. sure you know and um. So sometimes when it comes to that, when it comes to um, thinking bigger and looking beyond, it's like I, I'm, I'm a very I, I get very uh, comfortable and complacent, mm -hmm. and I'm like, okay, I can maintain this, right. and I and this, you know. So it's kind of like you know one of the things I always say about Tanya, and I know I'm talking a lot. I'm gonna let you talk, but one of the things I always say about Tanya is like you know, like for instance, with our house. You know, we, we bought this home and it's like a month later, she's looking at new, I'm like, new homes. And I'm like, can we like settle into this one? But it's like, that's one of the things I admire about you. You're just like, you're always, you're like, for me, I'm like, I probably, and, and again, same thing. I in, in my, from zero to 18 or 17, when mm -hmm. I left home, we lived in two different houses. On the same street. Um, literally, literally next door to each other. <laughs> right. We moved from yeah. this house to that house. Yeah. So again, Which it's like- Which is amazing to me. I'm like, you know, wow. Like you knew, you know, every person in your community. Right. But what I'm saying is this though, and I know that's a good thing for some people because some people need stability. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the other thing is it, it, it taught me, it, it taught me, Stability. So in other words, I don't like to rock the boat. I like things to stay the same. And I, it's like, okay, I can, I can handle this. I can deal with this. So, you know, and we've had this conversation before. So sometimes I have to push myself to, to dream bigger. Yeah. I know that I, I started off saying, do you know your, uh, your, your partner's, uh, dreams? But my, my point is for me, we have to do that on purpose. So my question, do you really know your partner's dreams and aspirations? Do you, do you know, you know, you may think that, you know, it's our, our that we want to just stay in this one place on the same job for the rest of our lives. Or do, do they want to start a business? Do they want to uh, start a singing career or whatever it is, you know? So I'm curious to know. So let us know if you guys actually know. You guys, do you have those dream talks? I'm going to be quiet and let you talk. No, you're, you're fine. I've been talking a lot. You're fine. You I know I'm fine, have, girl. You no, are I'm fine stuck. that way, too. But <laughs> I'm saying you're fine to continue talking. But no, I, under, I, I get that. I understand that. And I have um, learned that you value stability. Mm -hmm. And I think this is where we balance one another and challenge one another because... Yeah. I, you know, I grew up and we moved often, mm -hmm. you know, um, changed schools almost literally every school year, just about mm -hmm. um, sometimes twice in a school year, you mm -hmm. know. So I know the life of change, you know, mm -hmm. um, I know and I'm not saying just in the same state like we moved states we moved across country um and so i've experienced that and there there were definitely some downfalls to um to a lot of the moving and you know emotionally and academically and things like that um it was very challenging however i have learned that actually it also prepared me to embrace new things mm -hmm. um to not run from um, new environments and new mm -hmm. people and mm -hmm. all of these different things. And so I know for me, since we've been married, I've had four careers, you know, we've talked about mm -hmm. that, you mm -hmm. know, um, I like change. And I feel like as I'm getting older, as I'm, as I've matured, 
different stages of me have discovered different areas of myself that I want to pursue. And mm-hmm. I really feel like God is using all of those different experiences to make something great and to make yeah. something grand um, to honor him. But I think along the way, mm-hmm. in the beginning, um, we didn't necessarily mm-hmm. have that conversation about, you know, we we had conversation about, you know, oh, we want to own a house or we want to build a house or, you know, we want to have two kids or, you know, this kind of stuff. But like really, really thinking about dreams and goals for the things that are inside of me, I think we we teetered on that, but we really didn't understand the depth of it until we got older and later in in marriage mm-hmm. um, and became more comfortable with one another and with ourselves. Yeah. You know, um, it is extremely important um, to be able to to honor and value your spouse's dreams and goals and desires, you yeah. know, and to recognize that they have a call of God on, on your, on their life. You know, mm-hmm. we have a call of God as a team, but also I know that you have a call on your life as well. And so I honor and I value that. And I also want to, when I ha- when I see a need to push a little bit, Okay. Because I feel like that's a part of my role as your teammate, you know, Mm -hmm. is to push a little bit when I see that there's some hesitancy there. Is that, Mm -hmm. does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know, you said something we were talking before we started recording, Mm -hmm. um, you know, and that's kind of tying tying, tying into what you just said. Um, You know, it's important. I always say it's important that we have these conversations Mm -hmm. before and and we and we say this all the time, but we we try to give our we tell our couples that we work with, especially our premarital couples, couples, you want to give your your fiance as much information about you as possible up front. And, you know, because, again, uh, we were talking, you know, I, I know situations where one spouse or the other has, you know, a really good, secure, mm-hmm. which that word secure job today, that that's no, kind of I unheard think, of. Yeah, that's, that's been undone. Yeah. <laughs> if, if we learned anything in 2020. <laughs> that's been um, undone. But, you know, but let's just say it's a, you know, pretty secure, mm-hmm. good paying job. And, you know, they're making six figures a year. You know, they got benefits. They got you know, the 401k, they mm-hmm. get stock options, all of, you know, all of the, right. the perks, the perks, bells mm-hmm. and whistles, you know, company car, you know, whatever, whatever. Mm-hmm. But this person is like, okay, I'm working this job, but this is not what I want to do. Right. I want to, you know, I'm going to eventually quit this job when I'm starting my own business. Mm-hmm. And when the, when you don't, when you don't disclose that information, um, that could be a very, uh, that could be a, a pain point, if you will, right. in a relationship mm-hmm. When you know, you know the other spouse. You know one of one of the uh, one of the uh, couples that we follow, uh, Kevin Melissa, Kevin on stage and Miss Kevin on stage, Kevin and Melissa Fredericks. You know, you know he he talks about how he started out doing stage plays, mm-hmm. and he said that you know his uh, his um, his goal in life was like to be a Tyler Perry, right? Mm-hmm. To do this is back when Tyler Perry did stage plays. For those of you don't that don't know, he started <laughs> off doing stage plays. Okay, right. anyway. But they talk about how, you know, Kev would say, you know, Tyler Perry was homeless. Mm-hmm. You know? Oh, yeah. Say that to Melissa. Yeah. She's like, you know, so, you know, we got to be willing to do that. And she's like, no, that's not, she's like, that's not my testimony. <laughs> that's not my testimony. You know, she's like, I'm not willing to live in a car. So right. it, my point is like, he was willing to say, I'm willing to live in a car. Mm-hmm to pursue my dream and she was like yeah i'm not willing to do that and that that shows the the um versatility in the relationship and the dynamic of the couple because he it would say he's the dreamer you know Mm -hmm. and she is more of the one who says uh we need stability right you know we need normalcy and Mm -hmm. you know all that risk taking that's a little much you know um and there's, you know, typically there is one or the other. Sometimes you find um, two of the same type of people, you know, mm-hmm. 
sometimes I question that because I think what we do often often is we adjust our thermostat to to fit our spouse's thermostat. Mm. And so I think that sometimes people subconsciously will push down their dreams and their goals and their desires to meet their spouse where they are because they are afraid to rock the boat, so to speak, or Mm -hmm. to speak out, you know, what it is that they're dreaming or that they see, you know, um, and I have to say, we have to be careful of that, you know, as couples, this is why we have to have, um, those intimate conversations and be vulnerable with one another because our spouse should be able to come to us with anything. And so, Mm -hmm. you know, if God shows me a vision and I'm like, listen, (laughs) <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. this is what, you know, the father is speaking to me and I am fully convinced, you know, in my spirit, it's just like, I am looking for support, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and for us to figure that out together, you yeah. know, and trust God together on that. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, and I think it's, it's both ways. So you talked exactly. about, mm-hmm. you know, the person who is suppressing mm-hmm. their dreams and desires and, but it also is the person who is that, you know, like me, who's kind of more of the um, the, the, constant. The, the constant person mm-hmm. who is like, I'm just going to go along with it. I'm just going to go along with it. And inside you're like screaming like, right. oh, my God, right. you know, <laughs> you know, um, Holding on. yeah. So it's like, you know, so that, too, because, you know, sometimes um, I think we well, I'm, I'm going to come back to that. But I want to go back to another point you made before we started. And mm-hmm. you, we talked about that sharing those dreams and all that before we get yeah. married. Mm-hmm. But you said something that was interesting. And I, and I know we've experienced this because mm-hmm. you, you can do that as much as you can. But here's the truth of the matter is, especially for us, like, so we got married. I know for me, I was really young. You know, I was really young. She was not as young. Oh, uh-huh. then decrepit. <laughs> I didn't mean it. <laughs> Let me stop. But now we were young when we got married. And so my point is, sometimes you just don't even know. Right. You don't. You, That's you know, so at, at, you know, in yeah. your in your early 20s, some people do. Yeah. You know, some people do, but you but are still I, it's like I, I had an idea of what mm-hmm. I wanted, but it's like I had no clue. It wasn't until I really got out into the world mm-hmm. and started uh exploring and trying things and you know that's when I kind of finally kind of find found like what my passions were mm-hmm. and you know and so my point in bringing that up is even though you guys have a plan going in mm-hmm. to 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 your marriage and you know we're going to do this and do that th- th- know this that things change you know sometimes you know you think you want something mm-hmm. and it's like you get into that and start doing it and you're like, uh, I really, uh, yeah. I, I don't, I don't know if I like this. And you have, you guys have to, like Tanya said, keep the communication open mm-hmm. to be able to talk. And, you know, and, and that's, you know, why I think Tanya, I think that's one thing we've done well. You know, you mm-hmm. talked about having the four careers and, and for me, I I am like I said I can I can kind of get in and be constant and consistent, but like I said for you 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 like and you you don't want to be in the same place mm-hmm. you know for a long time and, and I have to I mean it, it can't you know we have to find balance in that I right. mean you can't be switching careers you know every Here, five six minutes. months right and you know but but my point is is we have to make allowances for each other mm-hmm. you know because at the end of the day if if i say you're gonna force you to stay and suppress that dream and a desire then you know you're not going to be the best version for me and for our kids exactly exactly right? i was gonna say you know um for me um probably the last few years where i've really learned to do some deep diving into myself and ask some those questions, you know, what is it about, you know, needing a change or desiring a change? But what it honestly has been is it's been my growth and my maturity process. One thing that I've learned is that when people struggle with a lot of trauma and disappointment, 
sometimes um, the even the thought of pursuing something bigger, it just doesn't process. It doesn't mm -hmm. happen. You know, for some people it does and they that that's their fuel. But for other people, it doesn't. And mm -hmm. so it's like for me, it took steps like I took baby steps in developing and evolving but the beauty of it is that it's all lined up you know what I'm saying it's mm -hmm. all every transition has made sense mm -hmm. in the time that the transition was made yeah you know um and I'm loving it like when you when you realize who you are and what you love and you're able now to really pinpoint those dreams and desires like we're talking about mm -hmm. it's an amazing feeling yeah and, and i'll say this too we're not saying either way is right or wrong right exactly because the other thing that i'm learning is a lot of what we call and, and i'm gonna say this and well no i'm not gonna say that i'm not gonna say this it's not this is not that podcast <laughs> Yeah, but I'm not going to say that now. I'm going to okay. save it. But sometimes, you know, we have to understand personality, mm -hmm. you know, because sometimes, you know, that's that's something that I know in the last couple of years is is knowing and understanding who I am, like mm -hmm. my personality. And I know a lot of people, you know, don't like the personality test of Enneagram or the Brig, my, what is it? Brig, Myers, Myers Briggs, Briggs mm -hmm. or... Whatever it is, it's the, the disc, stuff. My uh, nerd whatever. Talk on that. I love it. <laughs> but I think that there is something to be said about some of that stuff because I know for me, it's it's really helped me to understand mm -hmm. who I am, and it, it it helps me to be okay with who I oh, am. Yes. And it lets me know that if I do want, if I do want to take this next step or step out and do something that's you know outside of my my scope, my realm, or whatever mm -hmm. you want to call it, I now know some things that I can do mm -hmm. to help me push past my uh, fears or my complacency or my, you know, um, what's the word I used earlier? My um, uh, stability, my, 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 the love of stability, mm -hmm. you know, because again, stability is a good thing. Right. Right. You know, so I'm not saying that stability or, or being that person is bad. Um, so I guess what I am saying is, is we're not saying either one is wrong. You have to um, have that conversation with yourself mm -hmm. and have that conversation with your spouse, your partner or your significant other, whatever, you, wherever you're at in life. Mm -hmm. You need to have that conversation and you guys need to do what's right for you. Yeah. You know, you have to prove what's right for you. You can't mm. look at what Tanya and I are doing and say, oh, did that work for them? Did that, we're going to just apply that. We're just yeah. we're sharing our story just to, to let you know, you know, give you a, a, a picture, a picture what of, like. of what it looks like. Right. But you have to you have to understand it and know what that looks like for you. Yeah. And and allow each other and grow together mm -hmm. and, and, you know, not know, like Tanya said, no how much to push and know when to back off, know, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, was it Kenny Rogers that said that? You know gotta when know to when them. to hold them, know when <laughs> know to when fold them, them. Yes. know when to walk away, yeah. know when to run. Don't ever <laughs> count your money before you leave. No, okay. <laughs> uh, but I was gonna say this though. So for us, mm -hmm. with me, you know, growing into different careers, um, I would not have been able to do that had you not been the constant. So I'm grateful that you have afforded me the opportunity mm. to grow in the way that I've grown. Because if you had not been the constant, I would not have been able to make those decisions to make those changes. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. so it takes balance from both of us. Yeah. You know, and had you said, you know, maybe we need to stick with this a little longer. Maybe you need to hold off on going back to school. You know, I, I know that I would have done it, mm -hmm. you know, because I want to make sure that I'm doing my part to make sure that we as a family are good and that we're yeah. taken care of. Mm -hmm. But I appreciate your constancy and creating the stability 
in my life um, to allow me to be able to take those leaps of faith mm -hmm. because that's really what they've been is leaps of faith. And it, it, they have honestly been changes that literally in my spirit, it's like God said, okay, let's do this. Mm -hmm. And it's led me to where I am and has opened vision for what we're going to do going forward, mm -hmm. you know, as well as the things that you have done for yourself. Yeah. Um, in the growth process and building dreams and visions. Yeah. I'm not the only one over here dreaming. Yeah, I'm, I already told you, I'm just waiting. You know, I'm waiting for her to, there's a couple of things that, you know, I'm waiting for her uh, to get in line. I'll, I'm probably gonna go work for her. Um, <laughs> but now I'm clowning, I was gonna say something. I, I, I oh, lost sorry. it. No, that was me clowning. Uh, you were talking about, oh, I know what it was. So. But at the same time, here's a careful, here's what you have to do. You have to be careful that, you know, like she said, and I know that I recognize that, that because of some choices that I made to say, you know what, I'm going to stay with this. Mm -hmm. And even though I, I may not be, this is, may not be like my dream job, I'm going to stay here because it's affording a, a pretty good lifestyle for us, mm -hmm. right? Um, and it's a, it's allowing you to, uh, to to make your big leaps, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Now, here's the danger. For a person like me, I could say, um, well, I'm just, I'm sacrificing for my family. Mm -hmm. I'm sacrificing my, for my family. But I tell you this, if you keep sacrificing your dream for your spouse, inevitably, mm -hmm. resentment will set in. Yes, sir. So you have to really be careful and be honest with yourself, you know, and don't be, don't, you know what I'm saying? It's like some people wear it as a trophy, right. you know, especially when it comes to like, uh, like our kids, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, mm -hmm. oh, I, I, I sacrifice with my kids and mm -hmm. I give everything to my kids. I, I was joking. Uh, I always joke with, with my girls, but I'll be like, you know, I'll tell them stuff like, you know, uh, like when Bethany got braces, I was like, I wanted to get a new vehicle, but my vehicle is in your mouth. <laughs> You know, or, you know, I was like, I was going to give me a new iPad and I wound up getting an iPad for you, Bethany and Bailey, you know, so I joke with them. But um, and, and I understand and they know I think they know. I, yeah, I they joke. know that you're joking. But, it's, it's very different. But it's like I know people who, who do that and they 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 do it and say it as as like like it's the I don't know. It's like they wear it like this, this badge of honor. But my question is. Is like, so what happens mm -hmm. after your kids leave, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I don't want, you know, to, I, I would never want to get to the end of my life and look back and ask all the questions. What if, right? you know, what if the, what if the, what if, and, and so don't, don't use your family as excuses not to pursue your That's dreams. That's so awesome. Because here's the deal. You can never, you will never be the father, the husband, any of that the best that you can be until you step into your, 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 what we call your GNA, your God name, authenticity, yes. your God name, authenticity, mm -hmm. right? The, the true you. Mm -hmm. And, and, and I tell you, I think that the, one of the reasons why I have grown so much as a husband and as a father is because I really beginning, I'm beginning to hone in on who I truly am. Mm -hmm. And the thing that really turns me in here mm -hmm. and, and that, that, you know, some of that, you know, so it, it go, it, it really goes beyond even like a career or a Absolutely. job, yeah. you know, and, and that's what, and that's why I, that's why I think I've been able to stay. One of the reasons why I believe I've been able to stay here and, and, and be in this, that, and be in that, be the stability. Mm -hmm. Part of it is my personality, personality, but the other part I think it is, is that I'm I'm really coming to terms with who I am, mm -hmm. and I understand that who I am is different than what I do, ooh, ooh, ooh. right? Preach, preach, preach. And so when I know who I am, no matter what what I do, what I bring who I am to everything that I do. Mm -hmm. So I'm getting to operate and exercise some of that who I am, even right now, what I do, right, mm -hmm. and what I'm doing. And and so I would just encourage you really to like Tanya, she talked about asking yourself. So that, what are some of those questions that you, you talked about it earlier mm -hmm. that you asked yourself, mm -hmm. you know, to 
help you to make these transitions? Mm -hmm. what, let's, let's, let's. So, um, you know, my process is I like to write. And so I I will sit with a note. Usually every year I have a vision notebook and I'll sit, you know, in this a quiet the space. Notebooks. <laughs> yes, there is reasons I have no notebooks, books, sir. And drums. Anywho. And I will just <laughs> hear, hear, listen, hear, you know, from God. And it, it may be a word, it may be a phrase. Um, but I will ask, you know, what's, you know, what's your goal? What's the end goal? My end goal is always to help and to serve people. Mm -hmm. Um, and my end goal is usually to help and to serve people who are struggling with some of the things that I have struggled with in the past, you know, mm -hmm. they are still in those battles, you know, mm -hmm. rather that be, um, low self-esteem, um, lack of vision or purpose or lack of, um, self-worth and value all of And so I'm thinking about, okay, what are some of the things that God has done for me through other people? God has literally placed people in my life over the years who have ministered to those areas in my life, or he's connected me with people near and far, you know, who have helped me in those different areas. And so I sit and say, okay, what's the end goal? How are you going to help? How are you helping now? What's the next level? What's the next step? You know, mm -hmm. and it's kind of, I can't like really, really get into it right now um, because it would be lengthy, but it is, getting to a place and reconciling the knowing, mm -hmm. you know, Holy spirit gives me a knowing that this is it. Mm -hmm. And I was talking to a friend the other day and we were talking, I was just sharing with her, you know, um, when I look at the things that I've been afforded to do, you know, and changing of careers, you know, from being a professional banker to, um, being an administrator to teaching school and now being a therapist, you know, not patting myself on the back, but I can say that at every change, at every turn, it was like I was on the verge of the next level in that particular arena. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. I was doing really well and it wasn't like I was sucking and they were about to kick me out the door. No, it was literally like, okay, are you sure? Mm -hmm. You know, that you're going to do this now, but it was just like this knowing of, yes, this is, this is the time, you know? And she said to me, wow. She said, do you know, I've known you for years and years and years. And you would have never said that about yourself when I first met you, like have mm -hmm. actually complimented yourself in that way, you know? So I know hearing her say that was just like, yeah, that's really true because that has been a part of my process, you know, to be able to value myself mm -hmm. and to recognize it and to say it out loud. That's a whole nother thing. Mm -hmm. um, so looking at what's the end goal, what's the purpose, who am I here to serve and how are we gonna make that happen most effectively? And so it may not be a crowd of thousands. It may not be a crowd of 200, I don't know. But you know, if it's five, 10, 20, 40, you know, at a time, however God is leading me to do that, I know that's the, that's the, that's mm -hmm. the reason. So that is, I guess, I don't know if I even answer your question because I kind of <laughs> went on the whole thing, but. <laughs> well, I, I'll say, I'll say this. I want to challenge you. <laughs> I'm still laughing at oh, myself. <laughs> I was, uh, it's all good. You did though. You did. You I did. Answer. Okay. All right. But this is, so this is my, I'm going to say this, my piece, what mm -hmm. I would encourage you. So first things first. You know, God created you. It's like inside of you, inside of you is the answer for everything that you ever need in your life. Inside of you. 
God, when he created you, he put everything on the inside of you. I think what happens, though, is life, right? Yes. And we get all these things added on to us and put on to us and told. And, and they tell us, you know, you can't do this or you can't do that. Or, you know, you, you need to get this degree for this and you got to go to all that. But inside of you, mm-hmm. you know it's what annoying. the thing. It's and again, annoying. I'm not talking about a career. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm talking about the thing that you were put on earth to do. You were created it's to purpose. do this thing, right? And this thing will will turn every everything you do. This thing will will cause you to to excel at that. Okay. So what I want you to do is practice what we call getting inside of yourself, getting into your body. So what you need to do is spend some time just just you alone with you and just really looking inward, right? Mm-hmm. And and looking at, um, you know, what, asking you, you know, asking the, the creator, mm-hmm. what is it? What is that thing? And, and, and he'll reveal it to you. And oh, yes. when he reveals it to you, I know a lot of times we're thinking these, like you said, you, it's, it's like this big grand thing, but, you know, it's, it's, it's not, you know, my purpose is part of it is to live authentically unique. That's part of my purpose is to live authentically unique so that others are free to be their true selves. So it's like by me, and I've seen this happen by me being my true self, it gives other people permission mm-hmm. to be honest and open with themselves, sometimes for the very first time. You know, so again, it's so it's empowering. not it's not. It, don't think of it as and so. But here's the here's the deal. Mm. I don't want you to discount it, right? So just whatever it, it may be, you know, part of it is 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 the way you smile, or I, I don't know. But my point is, just get inside, get back inside, because because you you know your body knows. God created yeah. you to know, yeah. you know. And and again, don't discount it. You know, let me put my preacher hat on real quick. <clears throat> So, uh, <laughs> but I love this story. There's the story of Ananias mm-hmm. in the Bible, right? And so Ananias, um, this the, the the guy, well, so Ananias speaks to God. I mean, God speaks to Ananias about Saul, the guy we now know as Paul. He says, Ananias, I want you to go over here. So so God was dealing with, with Saul at the time. And, you know, you know, Saul was persecuting the church. Mm-hmm. He was Testifying, getting Christians executed, all this stuff. And so God speaks to, uh, excuse me, God speaks to Ananias, right? And he says, I want you to go and Saul, he's blind. I want you to go get him and bring him to this to this house. So I can't remember all of the ins and outs. Ooh, I had chill. But hey, glory. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm sorry>. uh, <laughs> but so God speaks to him. And he goes and does this. So he goes and gets goes to get Saul, brings him over, over over here. And then here's the thing I love though. From then on, to my knowledge, if I'm wrong, please correct me. Mm-hmm. You never hear about anything else from Ananias ever again. Mm-hmm. Ever again. Mm-hmm. So some people may look at Ananias and be like, well, man, you know, he didn't have a, a, a very crucial role. But I'm like, well, he led the guy mm-hmm. who pretty much wrote the majority of what we call the New Testament, mm-hmm. he, he, he's the one who guided him to the place that God right. called him into the ministry. Right. So what if Ananias wouldn't have done that? Yeah. So it's like, so that's the, you know, I, I think about a person like Billy Graham. Mm-hmm. I'm like, we all know who Billy Graham is, but you know what? I want to know who's the person that led Billy Graham to the Lord. Right. Who's that guy? Right. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because if it wasn't for that guy, then we would have never known. So my point in saying all of that is don't discount it because it's not as big as you right. think it's going to be. Right. It, it's not about the it's not about um, it's not about the grandeur of it. Right. It's not it's not it's not about the bigness of it. It's it's really just doing that thing that and you know what it is, because when you do it, you get so much. It, it's like it brings life to you. Mm-hmm. It gives you life. I'm way off the topic. <laughs> No, it is so on topic. We're talking about dreams and desires. You know, I was like, I was watching a video of Tabitha Brown um, this morning. Yes, she's the perfect example. I'm sorry. Yeah, but she's the perfect example Mm -hmm. of 
Who knew? I mean, she. If you, I don't know if you know her story, but she had been trying to make it in Hollywood. I'm talking like 15, maybe 20 years, mm-hmm. trying to make it in Hollywood. Mm-hmm. And who would who would have known that her eating a vegan sandwich in the parking lot of Whole Foods on TikTok mm-hmm. would cause her to just. So it's like, that's what I'm saying. It's like, you can't, so it's just, it. And it, it she was trying to act and all, and she's probably still going to do some of that and probably oh, still is, is doing, doing that, <laughs> right? But what I'm saying is it's a thing that that catapulted her onto the world stage mm-hmm. was just being her, say, hello there. How are you doing today? <laughs> I love your time with the voice. You know, <laughs> you are such a good person. And just, I mean, it's just like, it wasn't nothing deep. Right. You know, she was like, hello there. But and that real. just, that just, and it, it, it was like, hey, he's like, hey, Tab, you know, I am me. I'm somebody. Makes she, you feel like you're yeah. the only person so, talking to. So my point is, is like, that was so simple, but yet it, it, it changed the world, literally mm-hmm. changed the world. Yeah. So I'm sorry, go ahead. No, but I was going to say, she was saying in the video, she said, if you, it's that thing that you think about it like twice a day at least. You know, it's that thing that you're supposed to be doing. Just start, you -hmm. know, just do something towards it, you know. Um, Yeah, I don't know where are we going in this or where we went in this conversation, but... um, And I guess to kind of bring it back... Full circle, let's go full circle. Is... That's not for you just to keep to yourself. Right. You've got to. You know, you've got to communicate that mm-hmm. and you've got to keep each other in the loop on that process. And I know sometimes it's hard to articulate it mm-hmm. because you don't even know all You're of it. You're trying to figure it out. But it's just just telling your spouse, hey, you know, there's just something. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I don't. I can't put my finger on it yet, but something's been kind of stirring. stirring inside of me. And, you know, I just don't know. So, And they can help pray. You guys can pray together, yes, maybe help. Was, uh, and sometimes your spouse can even see it mm-hmm. in you, mm-hmm. you know, and they can help pull it out of mm-hmm. you, right? Mm-hmm. So um, I would just encourage you <laughs> to, you know, just make sure that you're having those conversations. And, and first of all, having them with yourself and the creator and your yes. spouse. And Keep if you your notebook near. And, and if you guys um, can do that, I think um, you, you'll stay in, in step, you know, because mm-hmm. what you don't want is is one person, you know, pursuing. Right. You know, and right. the other person always pulling back and pumping right. the brakes so, right. or vice versa. We so need to be going in the same Need to be going in the same, same direction. direction. And like Tanya so said, sometimes you need that. I'm like, whoa, hang on, hang on, right. hang on. That's not. Pull we your don't, we don't need to go. Say. We don't need to go buy a building yet. How about we just get a website? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you know, let's start. Let's there. start there, right? Yeah. So sometimes you know you need that balance. So, but but you know just just sharing your heart with each other, talking about the dreams and visions and the goals and the, all that stuff. Not just like Tony said, not just the homes and just but everything. You know, uh, the type of husband you want to be, the type of father you want to be. Um, I don't know, just, just whatever. Everything. Everybody. I wanted to, just before we wrap up, before we close out, I wanted to say, because you mentioned earlier about the kids, um, Bethany said something to me the other day when we were, uh, we were looking at some photos. She said, look at my parents. They just out here. And we mm. know what that means these days, right? But there, there was so much pride in her eyes and in her voice that it touched me, you know, Mm -hmm. that because we are pursuing God's destiny and purpose for our lives together and individually, that who does that give the permission to first, Mm -hmm. but our own kids. Man, look, you opening up a can. I'm, you know, I'm trying to end this podcast. Okay. But I'll say this last thing, and and I promise this <laughs> as I come to a close. Amen. Praise God. Uh, but I was having this conversation with Bethany and Bailey one day, and I was like, hey, girls, you know, whatever you want to do in life, you know, you could do it. Just do it. Mm-hmm. You know, if you want to go to school, whatever, you will just do it. You know, mm-hmm. do it. You know, and I'm, I'm talking, you know, you could do whatever, 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 whatever. And in me, something the Holy Spirit says, they they will not do it if you don't. Mm. 
<laughs> and I'm like, oh my God. I was like, I'm trying to tell them. And it's like, I can't just say that to them, right. but they have to see me. They have to see me pursuing my dreams. They have to see mm-hmm. me doing all those things to let them know that it's okay. You know, because if, if we don't, then they're just going to start off where we, they're going to exactly. start where we started and not pick up where we ended right. or where we left off. I was just about to say that I learned this from Lisa Bevere years ago. She said that our kids spiritually and naturally will start where we finish. And so if it's you never our start, job. We got to give them a good start, yeah. a good starting place. Yeah. So. That's so we're going to end on that because we can go on and now see yes. she's talking. She's opening up another can of worms there. You know what I'm my, saying? My espresso kicked in. I was a little tired and okay. then the espresso kicked in. Was, okay. Well, yeah. we're going to end it. We don't want to, we don't want to <laughs> hold y'all. We don't want to hold y'all too long. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Uh, let me stop. Trying. <laughs> so anyway, so, uh, so yeah, dream conversations, share yeah. your dreams and your desires. Yes. And just put, sometimes just putting it out in the atmosphere, in the atmosphere yeah. just, that just does something just to hear yourself say it. Sometimes that's, that's the, that's the leap of faith. Ooh, just saying it out loud. Mm-hmm. Sometimes that could take, you know, that that's yeah. the leap of faith. So anyway, I have what? Nothing. Okay. Well, this is Glenn and Tanya Coleman reminding you that your Your marriage marriage matters. matters. We'll see you next week. Bye.